Happy Friday. Welcome back to the DIY Designer. Thank you so much for joining me for another really fun DIY. Um, I'm stoked about today's because it's incorporating a couple different trends that are so, so huge right now. So fringe is a trend that it just never really goes out of style. It's always in, it's always out, it's always back and forth. And so um, it's really having a moment right now and I thought it would be really fun to create a, a DIY with fringe. However, another thing that is really big right now is kind of graphic pop art and sort of uh, art on our clothing. Whether it's something that's hand painted, there's a lot of hand painted fabrics running coming down the runways, pop art, text, handwritten, hand painted, all of that is really, really big right now. So we're going to be incorporating both of those together to create a really cool DIY. There's a brand that I follow that I absolutely love called Death by Dolls. And they just have the coolest stuff. Each one of their pieces looks like really special and handmade, lots of crystal and fringe. Look at this chain mesh belt, I can't. I mean, every piece I really love and I think it has so much personality and it's really fun. A lot of artwork. And they actually posted a photo, which I thought was really cheeky, calling out Fendi. Um, for the highest form of flattery, imitation. Fendi did this jacket and it's a logo, obviously it's their own logo, um, but it was the same exact style. And as soon as I saw them, I was like, I kind of think I know how this could be DIY. would I've never done anything like it, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. So I'm gonna show you guys how you can make your own custom fringe, like logo, pop art, a word, your name, whatever you wanna put on there. If you're gonna be buying fringe guys, just make sure that you actually see the fringe in person because there's some really cheap ones that are like each piece of fringe is so spaced out that when it's hanging there it, you're not going to see a word so you really need to make sure that you're getting a fringe that's really condensed and if it's not that condensed you have to double triple uh those layers up so that you really see something so that's it this is going to be a really really fun one uh i can't wait to see what you guys do with it okay let's do materials So the first thing that you're going to do is measure the actual placement where you're going to put your fringe so that you know how long to cut your fringe. The top of my jacket, the space that made sense for it was 15 inches. So I grabbed my fringe and I measured 15 inches. I bought one yard, which is 36 inches. So I have enough for about two and a quarter. So what I did is I doubled 15 inches twice so that it would be that much more condensed. And then I cut off the remaining six inches because I wanted to center it in the middle of my panel. So I cut that off and then I decided to fabric glue together my layers. That way they stay together as one full piece. So not only did I attach the two 15 inch pieces, but I also attached that little six inch piece to the middle. Next, you wanna actually tape the fringe to something like a paper bag. This is not only to prevent the paint from seeping through your surface, but it also gives you a way to now pick it up, hold it so all the fringe lays flat, and now when you slowly lay it down so all your fringe is laying perfectly flat, you're gonna tape that bottom layer as well. Put out whatever fabric paint you wanted to use. This is definitely something you wanna use fabric paint for. And you wanna start with your middle letter. So I'm doing the word dream. So I'm starting with the letter E right in the center. That way I ensure that my word is gonna be perfectly spaced out. I started off by using a little sponge brush and I realized this brush was too big. So I end up moving off to a slightly smaller brush as we move forward. You can see that the paint is gonna lift up the fringe a little bit. So just take your time. A way that's very easy to create even letters is to create like a like a point for them. So I did the top point for my A and the two bottom points, and then I just went through and I connected them. It just ensures that the size of each letter is kind of accurate. You can see now I'm doing the R. So I'm doing the two points of my outer R. That's the bottom part. There's the center. And now I went through and I connected everything. So you're gonna be stamping down the sponge and you can also kind of pull the paint down. Obviously when you're doing rounded areas like R's or S's or O's, you really need to sponge because you can't glide in a rounded. See, you can see how I kind of need to sponge paint the D. So here is my M. You can see again, I'm creating those little points and now I'm filling in the points because I'm going on an angle there. I needed to sponge paint it. When I was done, I realized that the paintbrush was a good way to add kind of a heavier dose of paint so that it was slightly more contrasted. If you want, a good way to, to make this work better is pull down on your fringe and then you can actually slide your paintbrush up with a little bit more tension. Matthew, it's a new day. It's a new day, this sucker's dry. So I like gave it a day to dry. You can see uh, we've got more color than we had before. 
Um, but you can see it's kind of like crunchy. So uh, this is the next, the next step in our process. Let's do it. The next thing you wanna do is remove the duct tape from the bottom. Don't worry if it looks like everything's going all over the place. The fringe is gonna lay right back in its place flat, so don't stress about this part. Just pull it all off fairly gently. Now, you wanna pick it up and you wanna actually start separating these little pieces. The paint can kind of connect the pieces into like a little bit of a glob and you don't want that because you want the fringe to be free, to be fringy, do what it does. So pick each little piece and just separate them. It's not gonna peel the paint, it's just gonna let the paint sit on each individual piece. That way, when it all lays flat, it's gonna have the movement that you really want. Okay, I'm gonna pick it up. Okay. Okay. Can you see the word? Yep. You can see the word? Yes. And is it all crunchy? No, it's free. free what? Prepared. It worked! If this is something where you have a jacket that you don't want to permanently attach this to, either hand sew it or machine sew it, so then you could just like seam rip it off and it's temporary. Um, that also lets you then add it to something different, but I'm gonna fabric glue it. So now you want to remove the top from the duct tape. This is the part I would recommend doing really slowly because you have three, two or three layers connected and you don't want that to come apart. Now I'm going to be applying it exactly to where I took my original measurement and I am using my favorite fabric glue here. So you want to do a thin row and go just shy of the end, maybe a half an inch shy of the ends so that you can center everything down. And once everything is in place, now you're going to add glue to that very edge that you didn't originally add it to. Just a tiny bit will do the trick. And in the meantime, now this is all loose, you can kind of get in here and slightly kind of like soften them up. You don't want to do it too much, um, but just kind of slightly. Okay, so I'm just gonna give it a couple more minutes and then we're gonna try it on.